Right, well, I'm partially there anyway. One of the main reasons I love this world is the underwater travel. I mean, isn't the ocean pretty? Yeah, I know it is. Oh yeah, um, here, it's actually the, uh, the, the first and only world that has like-likes, I think. The majority of them are underwater. <laughs> so, collect the Zora eggs, bring them to this marine research lab. And here's that really weird looking dude from uh, Ocarina. Him <laughs> playing the exact same music as well. Simple enough. Let him out in this really big tank. Alright, and as you can see, there's, uh, two big fish here. That's a huge fish. I bet that thing could eat a small fish in a single bite. Yeah, if you feed, uh, those, uh, fish enough, enough of the small fish, the ones that you can carry in your bottle, um, they'll actually cop up a blue heart. So, yeah. I think I'm gonna do that maybe after the, after this little egg mission. Which is the mission you gotta do in order to get to the temple. Well, I mean, you know, learn the song to get into the temple. Boom. Alright, this is the Pirate's Fortress. Similar to the Garuda Fortress from Ocarina, or the Forsaken Fortress from Wind Waker. The Temple of the Ocean King from Phantom Hourglass, Tower of Spirits from Spear Tracks. In other words, getting past guards. And in this case, being Gerudos, again. Oh, yeah. It's kind of dangerous to swim around the ocean as a human because there are these bonefish swimming around and. They're very annoying, and I think they re even respawn, too. Ha! I'm standing right in front of her, she doesn't even notice, sucker! That's because I'm wearing my stone mask. Now I'm unmasked. Now I'm not. Unmasked! Not. But seriously, you do not want to remove this stone mask. There are ways of getting past these guys without the mask. But it's much, much faster just to use a mask. So preferably, use a mask. For your own sake. Now very often in Zelda you get you can actually turn invisible. Of course, um you're actually um ahem, only invisible to others. Um they they leave uh, the character is only visible to the one controlling them meeting everyone beyond the fourth wall. <laughs> so, um, in case you didn't know where you were, they go easy on you like that. Yeah, that was a bonefish. You can uh, actually kill a bonefish using that electric barrier thing. So we're sneaking into the fortress through the underground corridor, or whatever they're called. Yeah, it's sort of a little block puzzle. I forget how it's good. No, I, I think you want to move this one back. That would be obvious, wouldn't it? Don't, have to, don't worry, there are no Gerudos down here. <coughs> no Gerudos down here. Alright, thank you. Alright, perfect. Wee! It's weird how those little current things look like, you know, 
flames. Weird design, but you do not want to get caught in them. Or at least, um, well, those, those ones you do not want to get caught in because they'll send you back out. You might, you might notice one of those current thingy sits outside as we were getting in here. Well, that's where you're going to come out from. Oh yeah, these little silver ball, silver spike things that JC ran in Ocarina, they're water mines now. Which means they're going to go kablooey on you if you touch them. You can actually blow them away and knock them, knock them into one another. Alright, time for a blue heart kit. It's an easy one. Oh, oh no, okay, oh no wait, alright, no, it wasn't that switch, he did have to hit that button. Not the switch I was thinking of, the switch is back here, and you gotta use, uh, Guan Link, obviously, cause he's technically the... Alright, I forgot that thing was timed, wasn't it? Simple enough. I know this one was timed, I did not think that other one was timed. Alright, we won't be needing that thing anymore. Perfect. Oh yeah, chest down there. We're just gonna restart anyway, so... Not much point to getting most of the chests around. Most of the chests in this game, because... Of the fact that, once we restart time, we're just gonna respawn. It's the only real sucky part about the whole restarting time thing is that... All the, uh, all the chests are just gonna respawn, and you're gonna lose the collectibles anyway, so... I guess there really is no, there really is no point in getting these chests. Since, once you restart time, it's gonna be as if you never really got them at all. The only collectibles that matter are the main collectibles, like the masks and the new items, and... And they're putting me right up by the mines. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Alright, here's another one of those telescope parts. Okay. Yeah, this is letting you know that you gotta go up that way. With our Invisa mask, it'll be a cinch. Simple enough. Don't worry, we will not have to go through all that again. If you don't fall off here, then you will. <laughs> Alright, but anyway. Oh yeah, here's something I want to point out. Look up there. That little balcony, I could never, ever, all my life, figure out how to get to that balcony. Um, and I know the Scarecrow is together because Talon's flying up, and I think I tried using the Scarecrow there. So if anyone actually knows how to get to that little balcony up there, then tell me. Watch, no one is going to tell me. Because whenever I ask people to tell me something, they normally don't. And when I don't ask people to tell me something, well, they do. And... But normally, I don't ask them to tell me something, it's because I already know it. And the worst part about that is, people, different people on Sistle telling me the same thing that I already know over and over. And you know, I keep mentioning to them that I already figured that out from some other person, whom which I told I figured it out from some other person. But you two people are annoying that way, I guess. Well, next time, a cutscene.